Hi everybody, I hope you are doing well. I am not in my usual setting as you probably could tell because I am actually in Italy right now, Milan specifically. I'm currently at the Duomo and I'm gonna try to get you some video footage of it right here. Uh, it's amazing, it's beautiful, it's awe-inspiring and it's been a whirlwind of a trip. There's a lot of stuff that went into me actually being able to come here and I'm going to do a whole video on that. I couldn't really vlog while I was here because I was super busy and also a little bit self-conscious. So I am going to be doing a more of a sit down story time in the rest of this video, but interspersing pictures and videos uh, because I have been taking those the entire time I've been here. I just want to give you a little bit of an introduction uh, actually at some place in Italy uh, proper because you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I just hope that you enjoy this video because I've certainly enjoyed my trip. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. As I'm sure you could tell from the intro, today's video is going to be a little bit of a different one today because I'm going to be talking about my experience in Italy. I was fortunate enough to go on a really wonderful trip in October and now that I've recovered some, I wanted to share my experiences. I actually have a lot of stuff to talk about so I've decided to divide this into three different videos. The first video, today's video, is going to be talking about my experiences, some story time, sharing a lot of pictures. I didn't vlog a whole lot while I was there, I didn't super feel comfortable doing so and also I wanted to like experience Italy as opposed to just using a camera um, all the time and talking to a camera. So I don't have a lot of vlogs, but I do have a lot of pictures and videos to share. So I hope that you'll appreciate and enjoy that. The next video I'm going to be doing is going to be about my luxury experience specifically in Italy. So I did spend some time in Milan and I did go luxury shopping and I just want to talk about some different experiences I had in different stores, show you pictures of stuff that I tried on and all that sort of thing. And then the third video is going to be showing you what I did in fact buy in Italy that was luxury because I figured that that deserved its own kind of video. Uh, it, it's not a lot, it's, it's in fact only one thing and I'm very happy with what I got so I'm excited to share it with you but that'll be in its own video as well. So today as I said I'm going to be talking to you just about my experience in Italy, how I got there and what things were like and sharing with you some beautiful beautiful pictures that I was very happy to have taken and so let's just get into it. So first of all I wanted to share something that was just a little bit uh <laughs> strange about the beginning of the trip, which was that I had to have surprise surgery literally a week and a half before I left. So I was super, super busy trying to prepare for everything and also get work done. And also I was pre-filming videos and editing videos ahead of time to try to schedule things on YouTube so I could have stuff go up before I left. And then literally a week and a half before I was set to leave, I started experiencing kind of debilitating pain, needed to get it checked out, ended up having to have surgery for it. It was just the thing that happened that I'm not gonna dwell on, but it was not a great thing to have to happen, like literally right before I left the country. I am very happy that it happened then, as opposed to when I was in fact in Italy, cause that would not have been a great experience. But yeah, that was just a very interesting lead up. So I ended up kind of feeling a little bit miserable, like right before the trip. And then the first day of the trip, I still was kind of like feeling the trickle effect of that and then the flight and then jet lag and all that stuff. So it was a very kind of rocky start, but still like once I got there and slept, uh, <laughs> things turned around pretty quickly. So I went to Italy with my very, very good friend and our trip started in Venice and both of us really wanted to see Venice for a variety of reasons. It's supposed to be beautiful. I really, really wanted to go to the island of Murano. That was one of my dreams in terms of travel when it came to Italy. I wanted to go to the island of Murano. And in general, we wanted to see Venice before it sank into the sea. So we went to Venice first and it was really, really cool. We had a beautiful view from our hotel window and just like we saw the sunset from the first day and it was just like amazing and magical. And one of the really nice things that I experience as an American traveling outside of America is that America is very young. We're a very young country and all of our buildings are not that old. And it's really interesting to me to experience architecture that has lasted years and years and centuries and centuries, which I'm gonna to get to later on in the video as well. But like people who live in Europe, they're like, ah, oh, there's a castle every 15 feet. It doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> but for somebody who, you know, our buildings are only a few hundred years old at the most, there's something very cool to me to see a building that has lasted ages and is going to continue to last for ages until maybe it sinks into the sea, but that's a different point entirely. It's just it's just really neat to see buildings that are that old and yes they are often staircase only and a little bit rickety but it's still just 
a really cool thing to experience. And so it was really fun to like look at all the buildings and also it was really fun to look at all the greenery. So it, Italy, especially Milan, but Venice too in a lot of ways, kind of reminded me of New York City in a lot of ways in terms of how packed they were, how busy we went during the off season, but it was still very, very busy with tourists. And I'm kind of glad we went during the off season because I can't imagine what it was like during the, the popular months of, of travel because oh my goodness. But it reminded me a lot of New York City, except for the fact that there was so much greenery everywhere. There were balconies filled with plants, there were trees on the roofs of houses and buildings, and it just, there was nature spilling out everywhere. And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed seeing that juxtaposition of building and nature. And also, especially in Venice, when you had water everywhere too, it just it looked really, really magical. And so that was really nice. The highlight of my trip to Venice, however, was going to the island of Murano. Now, the reason that I'm interested in Murano specifically is because as some of you might know, Murano is known as the island of glass. So it's where glass makers kind of were made to work. Venice itself was too worried about glass work work in the city itself because they were terrified of fire. So Murano kind of just became the place where all the glassmakers went to work and apprentice and continue to build their craft. And my personal interest in Murano came partially because, and this is something I haven't mentioned before on this channel, but I actually make jewelry. And I used to, many years ago, work as a production jeweler for a company that made demi-fine jewelry using rolled gold and Murano glass. And so there is one, I actually brought a, a pair to show you because I loved this pair that I made so much that I actually purchased it myself. And the beads are Murano glass. And I just thought that they were so beautiful. This is a Swarovski crystal up there. And just, I, I really, I really liked it and I really liked them. So uh, these are kind of like little special occasion earrings, but I, ju I just, I worked with Murano glass for so many years that I really wanted to see it and like go and appreciate it in person. And so I was able to. And what was really cool is that there were a bunch of different shops that had different wares that were clearly made by craftsmen. Like sometimes you had a person in the shop who was like literally doing a uh, glass pulling in the store itself or the person who you were talking to was in fact the artisan who owned or ran the store. And that was really, really cool. I ended up picking up a lot of different glass pieces for myself and for others, uh, you know, friends and family. And I'm going to show you pictures of those in this video. So I hope you find that interesting. And while we were walking around, there were a number of glass museums and glass exhibitions that showed you glass blowing or glass pulling. And we ended up finding this little kind of out of the way school that was started up in 2017. And I'm gonna show you their information up here because it was really cool. They had like an open warehouse room that everybody could just like stand and watch. And so you're just watching these people making glass. The guy in the orange shirt was clearly one of the leaders. And I don't know if he was the person who did in fact found the school, but he was clearly the one of the people in charge. The two women were apprentices who were helping him create the, the piece. And one of the things actually the girls were in charge of is that they had these wooden boards that they would use uh, to shield people's body parts from the heat of the molten glass. So that was really cool. Glass, when it gets really hot, is basically the consistency of thick, very, very hot honey. And so it needs to be continually held and shaped in order to, you know, create its new structure, but also it needs to be completely reheated. So he used a blowtorch a number of times. Uh, they did, in fact, blow to make it bigger. They moved it to a kiln at one point, or I don't know if it's called a kiln, I don't remember, but just to, to heat it up to heat the entire thing and shape it before moving it back to that area. It was really neat. And also something that was kind of funny is that I didn't know this, but Italy, a lot of people in Italy smoke. It's very, very common, more common than I think that I've ever experienced in America, even in New York. And so you, you see a cigarette every like two seconds, like somebody is always smoking, uh, whether it be e-cigarettes or an actual cigarette or whatever. So both men in this picture, in these videos, were smoking kind of like constantly, just like standing there with a cigarette in their mouth while they were pulling the glass. Or the, the man in the glasses, he literally had a cigarette in his mouth, pulled it out to blow into the glass uh, vase to, to shape it and then put the cigarette back in. And the guy in orange, uh, I didn't get a really good video or picture of this, but at one point he put a cigarette into his mouth that he did not previously have. He just pulled it out of his pocket in the middle of shaping this glass vase and then leaned down and lit the cigarette against the molten glass. That, you know, just his face inches from that molten piece of, it was very funny, honestly. And you know, just an experience that you wouldn't have thought that you would experience. So that was really cool. 
I went to a number of shops and just really enjoyed looking at all the different pieces that different artisans had created. And so these are a couple of the things that I ended up buying for friends and family. I bought this little goldfish for my sibling who does like sea creatures and fish a lot. And obviously my thumb for scale, it is on a quarter also for scale. I just thought it was really cute. And I picked the fish with my favorite facial expression. I bought this little owl for a librarian friend of mine. And I especially liked this owl because it had like little tiny glasses. And again, this is on a quarter for scale. It's like eety beety beety. It's so tiny. And so the amount of detail that someone was able to get into something that small was really amazing. Case in point here is also from the same shop, this tiny little blep cat like it is a cat doing the and someone first of all decided to make a tiny cat and then also decided to make that tiny cat stick out their tongue in a blep and I thought that was so cute so that's for a friend of mine who also kind of has a cat of that similar coloring so I really hope that he enjoys it I think he will I think he'll like it I bought this piece from my parents from a different artisan shop and I was told that the gold like coloring in the cats are a mixture of gold and copper coloring, like gold and copper flakes to make that like coloring inside the cat's bodies. And I thought that was really neat and I thought it was a little beautiful piece so that went to my parents. And I got myself this carnival jester. I really wanted something from Murano and so this jester uh, just, it really spoke to me. I really love the intricate details of this piece and so I, I had to get it. I had to pick this one up. Laptop for scale and she was immediately picked up and moved somewhere else because that was a little terrible. Terrifying. I thought that she was going to knock it over. So she was immediately moved, but uh, the laptop for scale is about, you know, yay big and just it really, really neat. Another thing that I got for myself, which I am very, very pleased to have found, is something that I affectionately call Fat Bee. It is a bag hook. It's just a little bag hook that is in the shape of a fat bee, and I love it. And Flat Panda, who is also a bag hook, and Pan Pan is my new favorite thing. Uh, I just think they're both so cute, and I had to get them. They were not expensive. I think they were each something like maybe 15 euros, so about $15, so 30 for both of them, and just like, I would do that again in a heartbeat. The last thing that I got from Murano, and this was a very important piece, is my grandmother, who collects glass actually, went to Venice 50 years ago with my grandfather, who has since passed, and she always talks about Venice and the gondolas or the gondolas and how beautiful they were and what an amazing experience it was for her to be in the gondola with my grandfather. And so I ended up finding a beautiful little glass gondola for her. And it so happens that my luggage got lost on the way back. I had very, very carefully packaged all the glass in a carry-on that was gonna be a carry-on luggage piece. And my friend was the one using that carry-on and the airport made her check it and then the airport did not put that carry-on on the plane, so it ended up being left in Italy. And it took a while for us to get it. It was a very annoying experience, honestly. I was not happy. We flew United, and I was very displeased with how they ended up handling that luggage thing. But we ended up getting it in the end, but of everything that I purchased, the only thing that broke, of all the glass, of all the, the only thing that broke was my Nan's present and I was very bummed. But luckily it wasn't that bad of a break, um, and I did present it to her. She really, really loved it, and she was super delighted, and thus made me super delighted, and it got a place of honor on one of her glass cabinet shelves, and so that was really nice. I really appreciated being able to have the opportunity to do that for her. From Venice we went to Milan, and Milan we had three specific goals in mind. We wanted to do some luxury shopping experience and luxury boutiques, which I'm gonna be talking about in a later video. We did some really cool secondhand designer thrift shopping, well thrift shopping, but secondhand designer shopping, which I'm going to be talking about now. And we also of course had to spend a day at the Duomo. So as I just said, I'm not going to be talking about the luxury shopping in this video. I'm going to make a whole separate video on that because there's a lot to talk about and I might as well not make this video a million years long. But for the secondhand thrift shopping, it was really, really fun. We looked up a lot of stores ahead of time. And the two main ones we went to was a store called DMAG, they had two different locations, and a store called Cavalli, which also had two different locations. And Cavalli was really cool. It had a lot of some really interesting, unique pieces from Chanel, from Hermes, from other designers like Kritza, which I'd never heard of before. 
They also, for some reason, had several pieces from Gap, uh, which ended up being a very popular brand in Italy. I'm not sure why, but a bunch of Gap stuff. Don't, don't know why the Gap was in with the Chanel, but mm -hmm. I ended up finding this really beautiful Gucci set in a Cavalli store, and I tried on the skirt. The skirt ended up being a little bit too small, but it was beautiful, and it was really nice to be able to try it on. It was, I believe, 532 euros, something like that, and obviously down from however many hundreds of dollars that Gucci sold the skirt for originally. And if it had fit me, I would have been very tempted, but yeah, it was just like a little too small. DMAG was really, really interesting because one of the stores that we went to, there was two that we went to. One was pretty small, but the other was huge. It had two floors and just a lot of square footage. Unfortunately, we went in October, so a lot of the pieces were like winter season, so there were a lot of coats, there was a lot of jeans, a lot of heavy, heavier gear stuff but it was still fun to look through. I found this really pretty dress from Philosophy that was marked down in like the clearance section for something like 370 euros or something like that. It also didn't fit me very well and I wasn't exactly sure about how the coloring looked on my skin tone, but it was fun to try on. It was very, very pretty. And it was a little bit too big in the top area, especially like the bust area, cause I am incredibly flat chested, but it was, you know, still fun and it was like nice. It also, the coloring was not I didn't think it suited me super well, but if it had been, like, I would have probably bought that if I thought that it looked a little bit better. I also found in DMAG, I found some Delvo pieces. Not a whole lot, but I found this one, like, little Delvo charm thing that was, like, a very cool surprise to find. I believe that was from their 2017 spring-summer release if I recall correctly. And yeah, it was just like a cool little find um, to, to see that. So that was kind of the thrifting experience. It was fun. I didn't really find anything that I wanted to purchase, unfortunately, because there was so much warm weather stuff. I didn't really want to buy like a bulky coat and I didn't need one. I also looked through like sweaters and sweatshirts because I am very partial to like hoodies and there wasn't just anything that spoke to me that I really wanted. And so I ended up leaving empty handed from all the designer, you know, thrift stores, designer secondhand stores, but it was really fun to look. I really enjoyed the browsing. Speaking of Delvo, and I'm sorry I didn't mention this earlier because I have some pictures to share with you about Venice, but I went to Italy with my Delvo bag, my Delvo Brillant MM, the Marguerite bag that I unboxed earlier on my channel that I was super delighted by. I had to take it with me to Italy. It was a little bit of a struggle to do so, but I did it in the end. It ended up being a great bag. I carried it almost exclusively on my crook of my arm or in my hand. I didn't use a shoulder strap basically at all. And I had a really fun time wearing the bag and just feeling really good carrying the bag. It also fit plenty. It fit all of what I needed throughout the day. And it, I was not worried about security with that thing because if you don't know how to open it, it's very difficult to open. <laughs> you kind of have to get into the rhythm of opening it. And now I know how I'm a champ at opening the bag and closing it, you know, without any problems. But I think that somebody who was trying to get into my bag who wasn't supposed to would have been a little bit deterred. But I also had a fun time taking pictures with the bag. I ended up kind of documenting my journey through taking pictures with the Delvo in different places. Like this is a picture of it in Venice. I just had the idea. It was an evening and it, there was nobody around and I was like, wait a second, you know, I'm gonna just put my bag there and, and snap a picture. And I think it's a really pretty picture and I think it's a really cool like extra experience of my bag and, you know, being in Italy and all those things combined. So I kind of documented Delvo throughout the trip. We spent a day at the Duomo in the middle of Milan and that was really, really cool. For those of you who don't know, the Duomo is this enormous cathedral in the middle of Milan Central and it is is, I believe, the fifth largest cathedral in the entire world. It is huge, it is intricate, it is covered in statues. It took, I believe, 72 years to be completed, and it is a marvel of not modern engineering. Like, this thing was made in, like, the 1200s, 1300s. I think it started in the 1200s and finished in the 1300s, something like that. So it's, like, 800 years old, and it's made of marble for the most part. It's just marble in, on the outside, and it's all hand carved because they didn't have any other method of doing it. And so this it's covered in a bunch of different statues and gargoyles and carvings and they're all different like that's the thing my friend and I just spent hours on the outside of the building not even going inside yet but just on the outside like looking at things and taking pictures and looking at different details and that was amazing I, I as you know I enjoy craftsmanship but I enjoy craftsmanship of all kinds and so being able to see something like that in person that's like literally 
800 years old, still standing, still looking impeccable, and just seeing the details with which somebody was able to use a chisel and, and hammer to just make these incredible statues was super awe-inspiring. Also a little fun thing about the, the Duomo is that one of the front doors is, is I believe it's um copper, copper or brass, something like that, and it's a completely, completely hand-done ton piece. Obviously it's ginormous, it's huge, and it's all green at this point just because of you know the years all over time it, it starts to you know tarnish and and oxidize but people will rub different parts of the door you know like they'll rub hands or something and so different parts of the door will be bright gold still like bright copper because the oxidation or the tarnish has been rubbed off by the people rubbing it all over and over and over and over again so there are parts of this ginormous door that all green was still really shiny so there was this one part where this guy's like leg was bright gold because that's where people would touch the most obviously this picture um of the hands where it was bright gold but also this guy's nose was just really shiny and i thought that was really funny <laughs> of course i had to take a picture of my delvo with the duomo because they're both amazing artistic masterpieces although you know i would say that the duomo is a little bit more of an artistic masterpiece than the delvo even though i love the delvo very much but i had to take a picture of them together and that was that was a lot of that was a lot of fun just experiencing that in person. There was also a statue across from the Duomo that we affectionately named Pigeon Statue because it was just covered in pigeons all the time, just covered in these birds. And there was just a lot of pigeons there, a lot of pigeons everywhere. Photographers would like be going through and they would carry bird seed and people could like feed the pigeons and have the pigeons land on them while the photographers took pictures. and. I wasn't I thought that was kind of strange to just want random wild birds to land on your body but like okay you know you do you I guess but the most interesting thing about pigeon statue is that every like five minutes somebody probably the same somebody would let out this really loud cracker sound like a bang huge noise and all the pigeons would fly off the statue fly in a circle around the entire area and then land back on the statue and it was very attack of the birdsies it happened twice while we were there at least and uh didn't we kind of tried to go away from pigeon statue so i did not want that many pigeons flying that close to my head <laughs> For the last leg of our trip, my friend and I went to Lake Como, and that was a really, really amazing place to end our Italy stay on because Lake Como is beautiful. The first day there was pretty tiring because there was a lot of travel. We had to go from Milan uh, by train to the station to then on the ferry and, and everything like that. So it was a pretty long uh, first day there, but it was absolutely worthwhile. It was gorgeous there, and it looked it looked so picturesque. It looked like something out of like a movie. It looked very much like like a studio. Ghibli movie would just like a coastal town very idyllic and scenic and beautiful so we took a lot of pictures there was a really cool restaurant that was at the very tip of the island where you could go to like see the entire horizon I obviously need a picture of my Delvo with that landscape but there was a cute little restaurant there that was like right on the water that I had some fresh lake cost sea bass at which I really enjoyed very much and everything about that area was very picturesque we of course had to go into the park there is a very famous park at Lake Como that you pay a small fee to get in to gain entrance to and then you kind of just can walk around and take pictures and like look at it and be tranquil which is basically what we did and that was really really nice a lot of walking a lot of cobblestone and a lot of stairs like all of Italy had a lot of stairs Venice had a lot of stairs but Lake Como also had quite a few stairs a lot of up and downs it's, it wasn't the easiest place to transverse luckily I have an ability to get my step count in but you know we would walk like something like 15,000 to 20,000 steps a day thanks to my little Fitbit but regardless it was still like fun it was really interesting to just like go and see a different place and it's, again so old and so beautiful like just houses were built into the landscape and trees would grow around places and all the greenery i really loved the greenery there of course were statues everywhere there was a beautiful gazebo that had some statues inside that you could like look out through them throughout the water and that was just gorgeous and scenic and I keep saying idyllic and beautiful but it was it, you know there's only so many words that I can use to describe how uh, the nature was really and, and just the the overall landscape there's this little greenhouse that we found walking around the grounds of the park that had these roses growing all over the roof and it was 
really nice. Just, it was so fun to walk and just take in all the scenery. And especially after Milan, which was so busy, 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 you know, very New York City vibes, it was really nice to take in something slow and something so, so peaceful. So that was really, really nice and really fun and a really good way to end the trip. With Lake Como, our trip to Italy did come to an end. It was a magical experience. I would do it again in a heartbeat, although I think I would do some things differently. I did have a little bit of a hard time with the travel and some of the back-to-back -back stuff that we did, but overall, really no complaints. It was a great time. I am already trying to plan my next trip. Obviously not this year, but I am looking at 2023. There are a lot of places I wanna go now that I'm able to travel again, and just, I, I really look forward to doing that. I know that this video was a little bit out of the ordinary for like a vlog or travel style video because it was mostly me just talking and showing you pictures, but I hope it was interesting or entertaining anyway. I hope that you enjoyed coming on this little journey with me and experiencing Italy in a way that I did. If you're interested in the luxury shopping aspect of Italy, then please just stay tuned for my next video. Subscribe for more content, by the way, if you're interested in more from me and a variety of different subjects. And if you have something that you'd like to share in terms of a trip that you've gone on or someplace you want to go, please do share in a comment down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you like this video, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.